Sometimes there's a dark side to your favorite television show. In hell! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV creepypastas. <laughs> For this list, we're taking a look at many of the dark stories that the internet has to offer about our favorite TV shows. In order to make this list, the creepypasta has to be based on a TV show or TV in general. No video game creepypastas this time. Number 10. Garfield Hallucination Theory, Garfield. What am I doing? This one's a classic and one of the few entries on our list with a leg to stand on. You poor little kitty cat. The story says that Garfield is actually a stray cat who's suffering from hallucinations due to extreme starvation. Hey, this poor kitty is starving, okay? As such, John and Odie are figments of his imagination, as is all the food his character is known to eat. The supposed evidence of this theory is a short, one-week comic strip that Garfield cartoonist Jim Davis created at Halloween 1989. Here, our titular cat awakens in his abandoned house. Since it's the future, Odie and John have long since passed away, and Garfield is left starving and alone. The strip tackles the ideas of taking life for granted and denial. I'm gonna stop pretending I'm something I'm not. I'm just gonna be me, Garfield the house cat. Number 9. He's Just a Dog, Courage the Cowardly Dog Funny to think that a cartoon starring a little pink dog could still give me nightmares to this very day. But can you blame me? Similar to the Garfield hallucination theory, the creepypasta revolving around this animated horror comedy alleges that Courage the Cowardly Dog takes a very different approach to an animal's view of the world. Normally, each episode of the series involves Courage protecting his masters from some kind of outside force. This guy is unpredictable, confused, and very dangerous. You seen him? This theory states that Courage and his masters, elderly couple Muriel and Eustace, don't actually live in the middle of nowhere, and that any villains they encounter are actually just human visitors unfamiliar to a dog who doesn't get to see the outside world much. <laughs> This would be because his masters are older and cannot take him out for far or frequent walks. Where am I? Who are you? Who am I? Another theory takes things even further, stating that the family is actually in hell with courage protecting Muriel, who represents humanity, from Eustace, who represents Satan. Muriel. Eustace. Slave woman. Your job is cleaning, cooking, shopping, laundry, and anything else I can think of. That would certainly explain all the supernatural and paranormal monsters they run into. Face it, Sonny, you're a failure! <laughs> Yay, farmer. Number 8. Scooby-Doo Post-Depression Theory, The Scooby-Doo Franchise. It's worth a try. Come on. Our next entry is a shockingly realistic one. Based around the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You series from the 1960s, the theory posits that the cartoon is actually set during a severe economic depression. Poor Mr. Magnus. First he's on the verge of going out of business, now this ghost pirate shows up. In order to cope, even well-known and otherwise well-off people like professors, business owners, and movie stars resorted to stealing and performing crimes under the cover of monster disguises so they wouldn't get caught. Aha, so that's it. He wanted to scare us off so he could pick up the land cheap. And I'd have done it too, if you kids hadn't have come along. This theory is quite possible, especially when you consider how rarely the Mystery Machine Gang actually helps someone stay in business. Well, at least we know he's inside. <laughs> Number 7. The Cul-de-Sac is Purgatory, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Humans are naturally attracted to the blunders, bruises, and over-the-top cartoon antics of others, sympathetic or otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to revisit the cul-de-sac. 
While the animated series follows a trio of kids who try to scam their way to the top of the dead end on which they live, the theory on what it's really about takes a different path. This way, please. Here, the Peach Creek cul-de-sac is actually a form of purgatory in Ed, Ed, and Eddie's world, meaning that each of the children has died at distinctive points in time. Try this one, Eddie! Oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> For example, it's believed Eddie came during the Great Depression and met his end trying to swindle the other children, and thus brought that trait into the afterlife. Oh, the soreness of the ache! Be brave, Eddie! Along with Sarah, Ed then perished in a car wreck over a decade later. What's this? Spin it, Ed, and learn. Oh, it's a face scruncher. Cool. While Ed, 2Ds, died in an experiment gone wrong in the mid 80s. Uh. Ah! Oh. Silence! My notes! So, if you believe in this theory, the bottom line would seem to be don't come to this neighborhood. <laughs> Style. Ah! Number 6. Dead Air and Big Imagination, Candle Cove Does anyone remember this kid show? It was called Candle Cove, and I must have been 6 or 7. I never found reference to it anywhere, so I think it was on a local station around 1971 or 1972. Unique to this list, this is the only entry not actually based on a real show. We couldn't leave out Candle Cove, though. This creepypasta tells the story of a supposed children's television show from the early 70s. Many local children tuned into the show, consistently being entertained by characters like Janice and Pirate Percy week after week, but also suffering from similar nightmares. The puppets were screaming. Yes, all of them screaming and screaming and the little girl was crying. Did you have this nightmare a lot? All the time, when I was five. However, at the end of the tale, it's revealed that Candle Cove never actually existed, and that the fans of the show were merely watching white noise and static on the TV. Everything they thought they were watching, including the characters, setting, etc., were all imagined. I used to think that it was so strange that you said, I'm going to watch Candle Cove now, Mom, and then you would tune the TV to static and just watch dead air for 30 minutes. The story was quickly spread around the internet starting in 2009 and has become one of the most widely known creepypastas. Even the wiki page is fake. And if that's not enough, the writer of Candle Cove, Chris Straub, literally says himself that the story is fake and that his inspiration came from an article on The Onion. Number 5. Hey Arnold is non-fiction, Hey Arnold. Hey, watch where you're going. Crazy town! Now you're getting it, bro. In a normal episode of this animated TV series, we follow a young boy named Arnold who lives with his grandparents in the make-believe city of Hillwood. Look at the little man. You and that hat, Arnold. You're perfect, just like that. What a guy. Yeah. However, the theory that goes along with it speculates that the series is not fiction. It's set in New York, and Arnold's grandparents are actually his parents. Eat up, Tex. You'll need your strength for the cattle drive. Yeah, right, Grandma. That's calamity, Grandma! Due to their age and mental instability, they told Arnold he was an orphan, and he suffered several physical and psychological problems, some of which caused the unique deformation of his head, and others of which make him imagine a world with his own friends. <laughs> to top things off, the creator of Hey Arnold allegedly based the show's premise on a real-life boy he met, and he's thus been accused of profiting off this poor child's story. Give me your purse, Granny. You can have it. It's just a purse, you know. For what are worldly possessions that we cannot take them with us? Hey, I know you. You're the punk with the bus pass. Number four. Ash is in a coma, the Pokémon franchise. I hereby declare to the Pokémon of the world, I will be a Pokemon Master! Ash tried to be the very best Pokemon Master there ever was. This creepypasta explains why the general themes, tones, and pacing change after Ash is struck by lightning early on in the anime series. Yeah! 
in the first episode when Ash steals Misty's bike to take Pikachu to the hospital. A lightning accident renders Ash immobile and, as the theory goes, puts him into a coma. He's found days later, and his highly medicated dreams allow him to become a Pokémon master. So the first few episodes are his brain trying to make his dreams come true, all while being able to move around in a perilous world. Hey, what happened to your bike? What happened to my bike? You happened to my bike, you little loser! More evidence to support the theory comes from the fact that Team Rocket's offensive towards Ash soon becomes quite lax. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Meows. That's right. Unfortunately, if he ever was to realize he was in a coma and wake up, the shock to his brain would cause monumental damage. Ash races to catch up with his rival. Is he running towards victory, danger, or disaster? No one knows for sure, so be sure you're here for the next Pokemon. Number 3. Squidward Suicide, Spongebob Squarepants ah! Hi, Squidward! Wanna play hide-and-seek? Suicide is never the answer. This creepypasta made its way to the internet in 2010, ruining childhoods everywhere. <laughs> the story starts with a Nickelodeon production team that reviews a new episode, but is then horrified by gory images akin to a snuff film that are intermixed with the self-inflicted death of Squidward by shotgun. No! Squidward! We were gonna give this spot to the SpongeBob nuclear testing theory, but Squidward's suicide gives even more darkness to an already depressing character. Stop stealing my life! <laughs> <laughs> While it is dark and way beyond depressing, the mystery surrounding this tale makes it an intriguing one as well. Uh, hey Squidward, you're not a zombie, remember? Oh, yes I am. Welcome to the Krusty Krab, may I take your order? Number 2. Dead Bart, The Simpsons <laughs> Now this is one show that has no short of creepypasta stories around it. Put you away for good. No! No! But by far the most popular story is Dead Bart, which tells the tale of an infamous lost episode of The Simpsons from the first season, in which one of the main characters, Bart Simpson, meets his death. All right, keep going. But you do know what happens when you mix acids and bases, right? Of course I do. As the episode reaches the final two acts, the world becomes distorted and eventually crumbles away, but not before shots of tombstones with the names of Simpsons guest stars, some of whom hadn't even lent their voices to the series yet. Guests who died since, like Michael Jackson and George Harrison. The dates were when they would die. The credits were simply silent. While the theory has been proven false, <laughs> the original poster stated that even Simpsons creator Matt Groening became disturbed upon hearing about this so-called lost episode. Mentioning this to anyone who was present results in them getting very angry and forbidding you to ever mention it to Matt. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. It may not sound as bad when you when you hear this, but that made me get away from Hatalia for a while, honestly. Now, 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 don't panic until I figure out where we are. Oh well, yeah, then we'll panic. I just did. <laughs> I am afraid we have run out of time, dear sister. The buttercup should be in charge. Yeah, that's it. Bubbles, you should talk to Buttercup and tell her that she should be running the show. Number one, Angelica made them all up, Rugrats. Mommy, mommy, I just gotta tell the truth, the real truth. What if all our favorite Rugrats were not even real? Okay, well, technically, since they're animated, they're not. But in the world of the TV series, they are supposed to be. This is a really good story. While the details involving Angelica are different between each version, the main point of this theory is that almost all of the main Rugrats characters are just the hallucinations of this slightly older female antagonist. Wait a minute! I've still got to do my song! 
The evidence to support this theory is based on the character traits of each of the toddler's parents. This can't be happening. For example, Chucky is always a nervous wreck because he and his mother actually died in a car crash. And to make up for Tommy being stillborn, Uncle Stu never stops making toys. What about these, Mr. Muckle, honey? I call them wacko specs. <laughs> oh, pickles, you kill me! Such a theory stating that Angelica may be imagining them all just goes to show how impressionable children can really be. Whether you believe the theory or not, we are sorry for ruining your childhood. Uh -huh. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite TV creepypasta? What's the meaning of life? Homer, I can't tell you that. Come on. You'll find out when you die. I can't wait that long. You can't wait six months? For more conspiring top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. That sounded like an explosion at the old Simpson place.